Thank you, Ambassador Carson, for joining us today in this Ask the Experts conversation about the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit. And I want to start by congratulating you on your appointment as Thank the you. Special Presidential Representative for the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit implementation. Thank you. I am pleased to be with you this morning. One of the major sort of commitments from the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit is to advance peace and security. Why is peace in Africa so important? Peace is essential to development. Peace is essential to progress. Peace is essential to prosperity. When there is no peace, uh, there uh, generally is uh, uncertainty, chaos, potentially bloodshed, and instability. Peace is absolutely essential for people to be able to improve their lives, to build their businesses, to send their kids uh, to school, to be able to uh, know that there is a hospital, that there are services that the government can render. Peace is absolutely essential. The absence of peace uh, undermines uh, growth in an economy. It misuses resources, diverts them from things that can, in fact, be used to strengthen and develop a, a country, to move it forward. But when there is instability, when there is conflict, when there is war, things slow down and resources are diverted, lives can be damaged, property and other things destroyed. Uh, instability and conflict destroy hope. All over town there have been lots of, of, of uh, meetings and, and, and conversations and, and, and high-level uh, uh, conferences and workshops all around the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit. That's correct. Could you give me some of the highlights from the summit and, and, and some of the accomplishments you feel that, that were achieved? I think the summit has been a great success for the Biden administration and I think it's been a great success for those African states that have come to Washington and have participated. A number of things have been done uh, over uh, the past uh, three days which will help to reaffirm uh, and reinvigorate uh, the engagement that the United States has with uh, Africa and African leaders. Uh, I think that the first thing uh, to note is that uh, yesterday uh, in Washington, uh, the President of the United States uh, signed uh, a vision statement on the partnership between the United States and Africa. And he did that uh, with the uh, chairman, uh, the current chairman of the African Union, President Macky Sall of Senegal and with the chairman of the African Union Commissioner, uh, Moussa Faki. Uh, this vision statement uh, sets out in very clear terms the kind of partnership that Africa and the United States want with one another. It sets out a desire to collaborate and cooperate on the global challenges that we all face. It sets out a desire uh, for inclusive economic growth for the strengthening of uh, democratic partnerships, of respect for human rights, the expansion of, of, of trade, cooperation uh, with uh, Africa on uh, things uh, that are important to Africa with Africans. The vision statement also uh, underscores some of the things that have gone on over the last several days. One, uh, two are essentially quite important in the political realm the uh, administration has said that it is going to formally request that the African Union uh, be uh, included uh, as a permanent member of the G20. This would be an enormous step forward. The administration has also reaffirmed that it is going to uh, seek UN Security, Count Se Security Council reform that would include uh, Africans uh, sitting in the Security Council as permanent members, not rotating members. These are quite uh, significant uh, steps on the uh, political stage. But it's also uh, an elaboration of the things that the United States is going to do in working with Africa in support of its African free trade uh, agreement, 
which in fact creates one of the largest free trade areas uh, in Africa and in the world. Uh, so this, these are all very important uh, political steps. There are other things that the administration uh, is doing uh, on the second day uh, of the uh, conference. Uh, there was uh, a time set aside uh, for uh, U.S. and African businessmen to uh, make deals uh, that will be beneficial to the United States uh, companies and to Africans. It was announced that some $15.5 billion in new trade and investment deals were done between the United States uh, and uh, and in Africa. Uh, these are going to move forward. Uh, the administration has also announced that the Millennium Challenge uh, uh, Corporation has for the first time signed a regional MC compact with Niger and Benin to strengthen the transportation network between uh, the, co the port of Cotonou and Benin all the way up uh, to uh, the capital of uh, Niger, Niamey. This is an important uh, port, road, uh, and land link that will help to facilitate trade inward and the export of goods, mostly agricultural, out. These are important. Uh, there also were announcements that MCC would be uh, providing uh, new grants to Mauritania, to Niger, to Senegal, and Gambia. But a range of things have been completed, and I think all of these things help to reaffirm a U.S. commitment to working with Africa as a partner. I know you had a chance also to meet individually with, with several African leaders and, and have discussions, you know, public discussions and off-the-record discussions. How would you sum up some of the messages from African leaders to the United States? What, what, is their, what are some of their yeah, messages? You're right. We were privileged here uh, in the building at, here at the United States Institute of Peace uh, to meet with uh, at least a, a, a good uh, half a dozen or more uh, presidents and foreign ministers. And outside, I've also had an opportunity to meet with a number of uh, presidents and foreign ministers. I think that uh, Africans uh, and African leaders uh, want uh, to see the U.S. engaged as a partner in Africa. They want to see the U.S. as a political partner, an economic partner, a commercial partner, and an investment partner. They want to uh, realize and understand that we uh, are committed uh, to Africa uh, as Africa looks to try to find partners to work with them on the challenges that they face. They're looking for partnership. They're looking for collaboration. They're looking for investment. They're looking for trade. And they're looking for ways that we can work together to help them address some of the challenges that they face. The challenge of climate change, uh, the challenge of global, global health uh, pandemics, uh, the challenge of food uh, insecurity, and the challenges they face uh, with insecurity, and the desire that they have to have more peaceful societies, more inclusive societies, societies that are growing prosperous, societies uh, that are stable and moving forward. This is a long list of, of, of complex interrelated uh, issues that, that, that these partnerships will hopefully help face, uh, help face these challenges that, that Africans face, that really the whole world is facing these, these this issues. Is, this, is, this is enormously important for the United States as well as Africa. Many people, I think, still don't realize the significance of what uh, Africa uh, represents. Africa today is the youngest uh, and the fastest uh, uh, growing continent uh, in the world. Uh, today, uh, Africans represent uh, some 18% uh, uh, of the global population. Uh, in less uh, than uh, 30 years from now, uh, in 2015, 25% uh, of the global population uh, will be African. Uh, one out of every four people on the globe uh, will be uh, African. And by the turn uh, of the century, 
uh, the number of Africans will be even higher percentage of the global population. I like to think of one country in particular, one important country, one country that we are constantly talking about, and that's Nigeria. Africa's largest country in terms of population, Africa's largest democracy, Africa's largest economy, and Africa's largest oil producer. Today, uh, Nigeria represents uh, uh, the seventh largest country in the world. Uh, in 30 years' time, uh, by 2050, uh, the uh, Nigerian population will exceed that of the United States. And Nigeria will be the third largest country in the world uh, behind India uh, and China. Uh, it will be Nigeria. We will have slipped back. Nigeria will have moved forward. And the reason for this is very simple. The median age uh, in uh, Nigeria's uh, population today is only about 17 years. Uh, they have a huge growth spurt uh, ahead of them in the next decade. Uh, and while uh, we see global uh, trends where population growth is slowing down in Asia, slowing down in parts of Latin America, slowing down especially in Europe, and even starting to slow in the United States, we see Africa being more important. They're a huge potential trade market. They're a huge set of players in the international organizations, in the United Nations arena, in New York, in Geneva, uh, and other places. So it's an important uh, thing to uh, remember. The continent is moving forward. It's growing. We need partners. We need both political partners, but we need strong economic partners. But we need partners who are at peace and inclusive and who believe and share our values and goals of democracy and inclusion. I know Nigeria has some really crucial upcoming elections and, and, and partnering with them to hopefully make February sure of next year, February yeah. 2023. And we'll be all be watching to hopefully make sure that, that those go well. Um, and, and, and I also just want to build off of what you just said about this, this young population and the next generation. So as we look to the future, and we look to these renewed partnerships, these renewed commitments by the United States to, to Africa. We have to think about some of the, the past commitments the United States has made to, to, to Africa, to African leaders, to the African people. How do you see these commitments uh, any differently? There's no doubt that uh, this summit uh, builds on previous American commitments to uh, Africa. And there have been many, both from Democratic and Republican administrations. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, in Republican administration, the Bush administration, the creation of PEPFAR, which helped to battle HIV and AIDS uh, across Africa. We saw the creation of the Millennium Challenge Fund under the Bush administration. That all rested on top of the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which came during the Clinton administration. And we saw during the uh, Obama administration uh, a real uh, explosion uh, of commitments to Africa. We saw uh, the uh, creation of YALI, the Young African Leaders Program, Feed uh, the Future, which was designed to bring about a green revolution in Africa and to address some of the food insecurity issues. We saw the creation of Power Africa, which was designed to help bring renewable uh, electricity supplies to the continent. This summit builds on top of America's previous commitments, but it takes it to uh, a different level. And those levels include, I think, three or four things, one of which I've already mentioned. One is that for the first time, we see a joint vision statement between uh, the United States, uh, Africa, and the African Union, signed by the President of the United States, signed by the current chairperson of the AU, and signed by the Permanent Commission Chairman, Macky Sall. That's new. The second thing is that the U.S. has also signed a memorandum of understanding uh, in support of the African free trade uh, uh, area. And that memorandum has been signed with the Commission, again, showing that the United States is committed to working with Africa to expand uh, its free trade. Thirdly, uh, Vice President Harris, uh, uh, on 
the opening day of the summit at the uh, African Art Museum announced uh, the uh, president's creation of a U.S. Advisory Council uh, in the United States on the diaspora. Uh, this will be a, 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 a council that will provide advice uh, and suggestions to the, and recommendations to the administration on how to deepen uh, the engagement between the United States and Africa. And we have an, a large diaspora in the United States of both new, uh, newer first and second generation uh, Africans who have contributed as older immigrants have to uh, the strengthening of American society. And we have people like myself who uh, can't hardly identify where I came from in Africa. But it does constitute uh, some 45 million Americans of color. And this council will have people who will help drive the thinking and engagement on what uh, we should be doing uh, on Africa. It's advisory, but it's an important step uh, f forward. The uh, administration uh, is also uh, looking to deepen uh, its uh, commitments with uh, the Young African Leaders uh, Program. These are all things that are there. And then finally, uh, the administration has said <laughs> they are going to uh, appoint uh, people like myself to advise uh, on pushing implementation of these, uh, of these programs out there. The administration is also likely, if it has not also uh, already done so, uh, said that it's going to uh, appoint someone else uh, to uh, help push some of the economic agenda for it as well. So I think all of these things are, are powerful. They build on one another. The importance of this uh, summit, uh, as I said, has been to reaffirm uh, strong American interest in partnership and collaboration with Africa, working with Africans to uh, achieve uh, the things that they want, but also that we share in common and want as well. It's also an opportunity for high-level uh, re-engagement. Re-engagement with senior officials, I think virtually every U.S cabinet member has had some role uh, over the uh, last three days in meeting with their African counterparts, Department of Commerce, Department of, of, uh, of, of Agriculture, uh, uh, including USAID and others working alongside uh, of their African counterparts, talking about issues of common concern. Uh, this is all uh, extraordinarily uh, important, that re-engagement, and it leads to that third uh, thing, and that's the uh, acceleration uh, and re-energizing the relationship for common cause, common purpose, and shared values. It's really, really, really exciting to hear all of the sort of new endeavors, the building on the old endeavors, and we're so privileged to have you here with us to, to take us through all of these accomplishments and achievements that have been this week in the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit. And we really, really wish you all the best of luck in your new, new role. So thank you very much, Ambassador thank, Carson. Thank you. Mm -hmm.